What's up, everyone? Here we are with an On It podcast. A very special podcast today. I have someone I know quite well, Miss Whitney Miller. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Michelle, the karate hottie, Waterson, 105 pound Invicta champion of the world. A What's bunch up, of people girl? that could kick my ass. <laughs> yes. <laughs> At least those two could. Yeah. I don't know. You're pretty tough, Lynn. I've seen you in the volleyball court. I wouldn't want to tangle with you. But yeah, these, I was impressed by your these volleyball girls skills. Are savage. Yeah, everybody should be impressed. That's, that's the way it is. So what's going on? How you doing? So so what we got going on here is we got Michelle who's had a nice layoff from her fight and she's in full on beast mode. I really feel sorry for the next girl who's gonna fight you. Yeah, oh my god, I know. for real. Like holding me in this cage and I'm just gonna get out there and rip somebody to shreds. That's yeah, awesome. I've, I've seen it. I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be scary. It's going to be like a, a, a buzzsaw. <laughs> we uh, have to go. Yeah, whenever that is, we'll be there. Yep. We'll make it happen. But you've been helping out Miss Whitney, whose journey from beauty queen into jujitsu MMA has been well chronicled by the press. Bit of a surprise, eh, Whit? Totally. I mean, I uh, was blown away. I, didn't, I don't understand. I mean, I guess to me it wasn't as interesting because I was kind of going through it, you know? Um, but then everybody, it sparked interest and people couldn't believe what I was doing. Mm-hmm. And it was really cool. You've Scary got, with cool, <laughs> I think. <laughs> You've gotten all the majors. You know, there's fighters out there with belts and kicking ass and they don't get USA Today, Yahoo Sports, uh, Bleacher Report. Well, I know else. every <laughs> time I would get on the computer because I... Once we posted the video, I went into the Keys and visited my dad and was expecting like this totally chill vacay. And I would get on the computer and I was like, oh my God, I have, I have 6,000 views on my video today. And I text you that. Mm-hmm. And then the next day I was up to like 50. Yeah. And then up to like 100. And now I'm almost at 200,000. I don't even know how that's possible. Yeah. It was awesome. Well, people are interested in, in people who challenge the limits of what we think is possible. Yeah. You know, to, to believe that you could go from being a beauty queen to an MMA is something that shocks people. And they, you know, they, they're they curious. They want to know if you're willing to put that face of yours on the line. I know, right? Are you willing to put that face of yours on the line? Um, I'm willing to put it out there. <laughs> <laughs> what does that but mean? But I am how learning non, how to... How non-committal. I am learning to block my face, <laughs> thanks to Michelle Watterson. Right. Okay? Keep your hands the up. Only, the only problem with <laughs> slip, that... Slip, slip. ...is there are lots of people learning how to have you not block your face. Well. <laughs> Just as hard as you're <laughs> learning to block it. Well, whatever. Bring it. <laughs> Bring it. That's Bring it. The, that's, <laughs> that's the answer. That's it. So you've had a chance to work with her this yes. week. So give us give us a little bird's eye view of what it's like working with this, this girl. Well, here. I mean, she's determined, you know, and, and I think that's kind of the determining factor if somebody's a fighter or not is another big thing is if they're willing to learn you know if they're open to the experience and you know they're not kind of closed-minded to the situation and and Whitney's all of those things and you know yeah she might be a beauty queen but at the end of the day uh she leaves that behind when we go to train and she's just all ears Mm -hmm. and we train and that's it you know so and that's what's important open-minded willing to learn that must apply for all people outside of your boyfriend i would say <laughs> you're not open-minded no when i'm trying to teach you something oh, yes very true <laughs> open-minded and willing to learn wouldn't be the two adjectives i would use what would to you describe. use sweetheart uh, on this beautiful valentine's day <laughs> oh, this valentine's is getting a little crazy this is a valentine's day podcast this is valentine's day like, Look at that. round one i would yeah. say um uh very strong-minded <laughs> <laughs> and opinionated <laughs> powerfully minded maybe you would say <laughs> hashtag powerful hashtag down. powerfully minded um, well I mean I think that's just kind of common with somebody that you um, confide in emotionally it's kind of hard to like break that you know don't want to mix business with pre- pleasure right no I just want yeah, you to true. hold me and we were talking about that <laughs> earlier. I don't want you to tell me what to do. Yeah, because it, it took me a while before I was comfortable enough to have, like, have my husband in my corner, you know. And it's just because I was afraid that it would take me out of my element, you know. Sure. Yeah, we were talking about that this morning. And I, did, I had never even thought about that with you. Mm-hmm. You know, I just figured you would, you would be there. But after we had a little conversation about it, I don't know. Because you are like my comfort, and yeah. you know, as soon as you walk up to me, and I'm like on the brink of tears, it's, it's over. coming out. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I. I mean, 
I'm up to do whatever, of course. But I think obviously having strong coaches who can actually supply the information is going to be way more important because, uh, you know, I know a thing or two. I'm no master, you know, but um, yeah, but, but just having these, you there. But these, you know, these guys, they're the real experts. And I think uh, hearing it from them will be a great advantage. But, you know, it's a long way till that moment. So you well, can figure it out. And, uh, apparently not. Figure it out and decide. So speaking of that. What do you think? What do you think about setting a fight date somewhere out in the future? Are you ready for that yet? Are you ready to cross that hurdle, put that put that out there in the in the ether? Um, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I like it makes me kind of like excited to talk about it. You know, sure. what kind of fight would it be? Okay, I'm being coach now. I'm like, hold It'd be up, a wait. amateur MMA fight. Amateur MMA. So fight. no elbows on the ground. No knees that would be um, reinforced coming up to the fight will she have any kickboxing f- smokers or anything i don't know you're the coach for now i think <laughs> yeah i mean i think that would be wise to do before she goes uh-huh. into an mma fight what's a kickboxing smoker it's, it's where you get high as fuck <laughs> and go fight somebody well i <gasps> think the reason why they call <laughs> smokers hard. is because they used to have them in like bars and stuff where they used to smoke you know and so it kind of just I don't know. I don't know why they call them smokers. It's a good theory. You think that's <laughs> accurate? Is it kind of like I've, I've had sense. plenty of fights in strip clubs and bars and stuff like that. Really? I'm yes. sure a lot of people listening have had fights in strip clubs too. This just, just, <laughs> just kind of happen. Yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> when they go to visit their girlfriend and they're like, "Oh my god, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what's going on here? What are you doing on stage? <laughs> uh, your name's not Candy." <laughs> <laughs> this is a great Valentine's Day podcast we're doing here. It's yeah. so light, fluffy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's what I would. I mean, I mean, but we were talking about it earlier. Sometimes, just setting a date and just being like, "This is what we're doing," will um, kind of light a fire under your butt and mm-hmm. just make you work. Well, because you've got the other component. You got some jujitsu tournaments. You got your next tournament coming up this weekend. Tomorrow. The, tomorrow. This already. time tomorrow. We will know if I am happy or sad. Should be the same either way. Yeah, but you know, I'm going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's the toe deal? You hurt your toe yesterday. I hurt my toe. How is that going to affect you? What are you going to do? Are you going to just tape it up? Yeah, but I did this before the last tournament too. And I just taped it up. So maybe it's like a good luck charm or something. Tape and go. Tape, tape and go. go. Tape and go. So what are you feeling? How are you feeling for this tournament here? You've been wrestling with a lot of tough people here. How's that, how's that affected you here? Well, I had a major breakdown. I guess it wasn't major. It was just a breakdown. I'm sure I could get a little more crazy, and I probably will in the future. <laughs> Great. Um, yeah, so look forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's been good. You know, I feel like I've learned a lot more than I have in the past. I'm definitely, I have a lot of more skills than I did for my last tournament. But it's also, I, I don't know. I feel more, more pressure on this one. Sure. Maybe because I've been eyes. training. Yeah, there's more eyes, and I've been training harder and longer, and I don't know. Those girls are going to see you in your division, and they're going to want to take you down. Yeah, I was just going to say, as, <laughs> as much as we don't want to think that, as much as we want to hope and you know pray that people are like being positive, like people are just like, there are going to be some people that are watching because they want to see you get hurt. Oh, yeah, totally. You know? I think that's why... I think a lot of people are watching my videos just for that. To be like, Shh, she can't do that. Yeah. yeah. What's she thinking? But that's the motivation, you know, to have something, to have some force up against you resisting you is some of the best motivation tool you can. When everybody's pumping your tires and telling you how great you are and telling you, you know, everything that you want to hear, it's a little bit harder to get out of bed. It's a little bit harder to right. to make yourself do that, you know. And the real masters find a way to self-motivate, but... And it's sometimes great to have real opposition out there. Yeah. So, you know, in, in a lot of ways, that's a blessing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I well, agree. You're always going to be the hunter or the hunted. Which one would you rather be? The hunter. <laughs> <laughs> right? Of course. I mean, <laughs> okay. Well, if you're the hunter, that means you're on top. Uh, uh, eh. Yeah, but if you're the hunter, you usually have a gun or like you got some, you got some good things <laughs> going on with you. <laughs> you're the hunter and the hunted. Okay. I'm down with that. At the same time, Whoa. simultaneously, the yin and yang of the universe. That's what I'm talking about. That's deep. The deadliest is the most this sought This is why after. you're in my corner, babe. <laughs> Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. So, tell, you know, 
tell us a little bit about what this has required from you from an emotional standpoint, because obviously, and then we'll talk about the physical standpoint as well. Um, well, th- I mean, the whole mental aspect of it's a lot harder for me compared to pageants because in pageants you can just walk on the stage and you can be in the worst mood possible, but it's super easy to put a smile on your face and the judges won't know the difference. But when it comes to jujitsu or fighting, you can't do that. You have to be in the moment, um, 100% of the time. And if you're not, you're going to get hurt. And so I think for me, I, I tend to get really frustrated sometimes. And that's what gets, gets to me the most. I've, I've played sports my entire life. And so I'm, and I've been blessed. I've been, I'm a very athletic person. And so I'm used to winning. I'm used to picking up things really fast and excelling in them. But this is not the same. Like mm-hmm. I, I do feel like I'm picking it up, but there's so much that goes into it. So much hard work, not just physically, but mentally that it's hard for me. Yeah. Um, is that what's the hardest part is? The hardest part is the not winning, the getting beaten and getting beaten in a very primal way. Yeah. And getting beaten uh, like every time you go to the gym. Yeah. It's like, I'm going to the gym. Yes, I'm going to learn, but I'm going to get my ass kicked. You know, especially training with um, Michelle and Tessa uh, Simpson, who we trained with the other day. They've been doing this for years. I mean, they they know the ins and the outs of it. And so I, I'm just beginning. So I but I feel like I need to be on their same level, which I know is impossible. It's just it's hard for me. What's the attitude that you bring in? Because I'm sure you've got a chance to train with a lot of people who are better than you to get to the point place where you are here. Do you have that kind of idea of like, you know, what's the best attitude that you like to carry into those situations? Well, I think the best thing to do is um, to stay positive. You know, and when and when things ba- bad things happen to you, it's, it's just kind of a learning curve and you just kind of have to let it roll off your shoulders and not hold on to it and move forward. Yeah. Uh, and that's all you can really do is move forward and keep tracking. I think the, uh, you know, the, the way that the master would approach it would be to realize that, you know, what's happening on a, on a larger level is that you're improving mm-hmm. and you're improving because you're testing yourself against someone who's better than you, right. you know, without nothing is going to sharpen a sword that isn't hard, harder than the steel itself. You know, that's the only way to do it. If you're just cutting through fluff the whole time, you know, cutting watermelons, the sword's going to get duller. But if you got a sharp stone with diamonds on it, that's what's really going to make your sword sharper and make Mm -hmm. you better. But what is getting diminished is your ego. You know, all, whatever is frustrated, whatever is sad, that's the part of your ego. Right. And that's, you know, learning how to remove that and just have everything happen. And maybe, you know, maybe your ego creeps back in, but only enough to have a little smile to say, I'll get you one day, motherfucker. <laughs> you know what I mean? You just let it in just a little bit enough. And I think, you know, that's the way the, uh, the master would approach it. But that's the journey. This is the journey to mastery of yourself, which yeah. is, I think, what makes this story so interesting and what makes all of these fighters and different professionals in these different realms so interesting is you meet them and they've, they've come face to face with so many of these demons that lay lurking in the closets of normal people. But, you know, if you're going to fight, you got to come face to face with them and slay Mm -hmm. those demons. Yeah. That's the way to put it. My my palms are sweaty. (laughs) (laughs) It's a, it's a big journey and that's how you know there's something immense ahead of you. Yeah. You know, exactly. And you know, I really do. I, I care about it and I, I want to succeed and I want to stick with this. And you know, we were talking about this the other day when I was crying at, uh, in the middle of our session is that you were saying that it's okay, you know, like mm-hmm. you know, one of uh, Michelle's friends is a pro fighter and she's in the gym, I mean, killing the mitts, but tears are just rolling down her face from frustration or whatever it, it may be. And, and, you know, we talked to another pro fighter that, you know, he cried after his fight and that it's just kind of part of the game. It's that emotional release you have to let go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, some of the everybody handles it in a different way. So, I mean, there's some people who still vomit before every competition <laughs> too. You know, like every single one. Just they have to get that out in a certain way, and it's it's part of it. You know, and that's that's I think something to something to expect as you go forward. Michelle, what what was your like first fight experience? I mean, well, I mean, it's got to be kind of the same, uh, the same ordeal. You know. 
I, I'm hearing Whitney talk, and it's kind of like bringing me back, you know, because before I, I mean, yeah, I grew up doing karate, uh, but it was the artistic side of karate, and I point sparred, and um, like, I thought having my black belt in karate was good enough foundation for me to go into fighting, you know, and I and I just remember like, you know, all the emotions that that Whitney's going through right now and um, getting told that what am I doing, you know, from my friends, from my family, from my closest, you know, my closest friends. What are you doing? I was working at Hooters, modeling, traveling the world, doing photo shoots for calendars and stuff like that, but there was just um, something in my heart that told me that this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to challenge myself and... Um, it was hard for me and it was uh, breaking me down and uh, it just it really does make you face your demons and yeah I mean it, you kind of put your heart on the line for the whole world to see yeah and uh, I mean it, it can get pretty ugly sometimes and you have to realize, like, that you're doing it for yourself and nobody else. The it, the rawness of it, you know, you get ugly, but it can get beautiful. You know, I mean, you see some, and I think that's what makes this level of intense sport so interesting. Because, you know, it, watching you in your fight, you know, I mean, that was that must have been incredibly tough for those people who are really close to you. But to see, you know the execution of what you did to win that and how you came out and the emotional outpouring that came after that. I mean, that's, it's beautiful. Oh yeah. I mean, it was like a rocky moment for sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I do like, I remember like, I mean, you're kind of in the zone too at the same time, you know, like when I was getting the snot kicked out of me in the third, I, I mean, I was in the zone, but I do remember looking over to my corner and just kind of like waiting for some sign you know like give me something you know and all I remember is is my husband kind of just and that's all he did like in that like like from there I just knew like just just wait just wait you know be mm -hmm. patient and um, I was and it, it ended up working out for me yeah <laughs> beautiful patience I need to work on that one too <laughs> Jesus we were doing jujitsu the other day and my in, um, other instructor Paolo and out he was like just ca just calm down a minute you know just read me read me and he's like i know that you've played sports your whole life and you're very athletic and all you want to do is just attack and i was like yeah i just want to tackle you right now you're just sitting right in front of me and i want to pounce on you like a lion <laughs> he's like just patience calm down yeah oh, you watch so you watch some of those you'll even see him even in mma fights they'll have their eyes closed you know, they're so relaxed and just feeling what the other person's doing, feeling their body and moving. That's, you know, conserving all that energy. I think that's, you know, that's something you learn with the game for sure. So talk to us a little bit about some of the physical demands because now you've been training similarly to you would if you were in a real camp, going twice a day, going hard, testing yourself. How's that been? Oh, man. I mean, I've been so sore this week. I can't even handle it. <laughs> like, I'll get in the shower, and I feel just like just the water from the shower hurts. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but I also do like to push myself that hard. And um, training twice a day has been pretty pretty rough. But I feel like, you know, like you said, when we, when we set that si fight date, and it's, I see it out there in the distance, that's what I'm going to do. There's just no if, ands, or buts about it. I got to go twice a day. And I have to force myself to go. And like Michelle was saying, you have to stay positive. I might not be the happiest person when I leave practice. You know, I might be crying or anything. But I know I'll be fine the next day. And I'll step, I'll step back in that same gym that I thought conquered me before. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, my body just is not used to it. And I keep asking both of you guys, is, does my body just get used to this eventually? <laughs> <laughs> because I don't know. I really hope it does. Uh, but yeah, just kind of dealing with all of that. And then, you know, hurting my toe. That's really frustrating. Ugh. Yeah, I remember I was rolling in, I was rolling in Brazil. And uh, this guy, Marvio Charles, who I guess won some silver medal in some big jiu-jitsu championship. Anyway, he's really good. He was tapping <laughs> me about every 30 seconds. 
And so he's tapping me every 30 seconds, probably tapped me 15 times. Like, this is fucking great. And then there's a hole in the mat and I went to go move <gasps> and I got my pinky toe caught in it and it just went. That's what mine did. Completely went sideways and was all bent off. Yeah. And I was all crooked and stuff. <laughs> and, <laughs> and he looks at, he yeah, looks at it and he goes, yeah, this is normal. <laughs> I go, well, I was planning on stopping now. And he's like, no, this is normal. It's like, great. All right. Pop it guess, back in and go. Yeah, I guess we keep going. Yeah, that's what everyone's saying. You'll get used to it. <laughs> I'm like, what? You get used to breaking your bones? All right. I'm ready for that day to get used to it, though. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you. I'm ready for it. I'm ready for my feet to not get mat burn because I got mat burn so much that it just I have ugly calluses. And I'm ready to not for it not to hurt when I break my toes. Well, they'll just call us hurt. over <laughs> and uh, just when you go get your pedicures, tell them not to scrape it off because you need that. <laughs> yeah, I know. I tell them that already. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I th- those are important. Okay. <laughs> I've worked hard for those. Please don't. What? <laughs> they have no idea why. Yeah. And I come in there all the time with all these bruises all over me. I swear they think that you're mean to me or something. <laughs> like, I'm no, t- I get it from the I'm gym. I'm taking a small hammer and hitting you in the legs <laughs> yes. with it. All yeah. Over. This is torture. <laughs> Yeah. Um, it'll be much worse when you start sparring heavy and you have black eyes and stuff. That's going to be really embarrassing. My parents are going to love that one. <laughs> They're going to look at me like, oh, that son of a bitch, that yeah. piece of shit. I was about do to you say. Ever, do you ever get that when you're out with Josh and you've just gotten, yeah. gotten in a fight? Yeah. Yeah, we play off of it sometimes. <laughs> just like at the restaurant, like, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I won't order the, the buffalo wings. Because I know if, if I saw that and I didn't make the assumption, I mean, I hate those people. I mean, that's like the worst thing to me. So, well, you when know. I see somebody with the black eye now, the first thing I think of is, I wonder what sport they do. That's good. That's good. I'm not there yet. I'm like, mm. Well, so at first I, I look at like, yeah. I, I guess I look at their shape mm-hmm. and like their mood. Right. You know? Right. Yeah, you can get a read off their yeah, energy. Yeah. 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 They're, they're happy and vibrant and <laughs> super athletic you can probably assume that they're doing some kind of sport yeah safe to say so whitney jujitsu tournament this weekend let's get some predictions what's going down you're in the beginners you're in the beginners two goals. bracket boom two goals Bam. Gi, Enough said. no Next. Gi, two goals are you doing the absolute <laughs> are you doing any kind of they don't have that i mean i definitely would if there are weight classes i mean i don't want to go well i don't know me i would definitely in my same division Mm-hmm. I think would be good. And then another tournament on March 8th, mm-hmm. right? In Austin. USA Today will be here for that one. So th- that's going to be nerve wracking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and <laughs> my boyfriend won't be here. Nope. Aww. I'll be gone. Expo West. Big time for on it. Going to see what all the other crazies in our industry are up to out there. Yeah. Well, for you just sure. don't think about it. You know, like when you get in there, it's everything's out the window anyways yeah my dad will be in there though Ooh, doggy it'll be his first time to see me do anything like that is he a you shouter at your events does he yeah, shout your shatter. name and stuff well, i don't know <laughs> my mom is she'll I be mean, like i don't think she god kick her ass <laughs> <laughs> one time she was like telling me to tickle the girl i was like you cannot tickle <laughs> <laughs> is that is that an actual rule you're not allowed to tickle i don't know but i just think it would be kind of silly <laughs> tickle, tickle, tickle. i don't know i think it's legal huh? <laughs> i think it's legal it could work <laughs> <laughs> These are great ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely taking notes. I'm, I am envisioning just like uh, digging my fingers into their the like rib or out. something. <laughs> I will. I think I've tickle tapped the fuck out of you before. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Sure. I don't like that. I don't, those are like the worst. <laughs> uh, yay, yay. And then, so you got these tournaments. You can pick up your sparring probably. See how that goes. So what do you think is a likely time zone for your for your potential first MMA fight? Coach, mm. if you were to say, when do you think she'd be ready to to step in the ring amateur as an amateur? Now. Well, this, it just depends, like, because um, I haven't seen you like spar spar, you know. And I think that's nobody a, has. She hasn't even seen herself spar okay, spar. Okay, yeah. So that's just gonna be a big factor of it. Like, I couldn't right. tell her like off the bat. Like, I don't know. Some people like to get hit, and some people don't. You know, so it, 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 that's a big factor of it. Which I one think. are you, it? Well, I'm pretty sure I don't like to get hit. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, you can be really good at jujitsu, but if you get hit in the face trying to, you know, so you just, you have to train yourself to get hit. And I mean, like I said, you have to find that fire, uh-huh. you know, you got to find that fire inside of you. And, 
And the only way to do that is to to put yourself in those situations. It's yeah. kind of hard for me to say, like, just, like, I, I know you're strong, you know, and I know you're willing to learn. And so, I mean, with that and just your drive and your athletic ability, I, I think you should be able to get your first MMA fight in before the end of the year. Holy moly. There it or, is. Or, or, I mean, it, it, at least if you're not ready for that, at least a smoker. You know, uh, if you're... If you, you I don't... I still don't know what that means. I'm assuming kickboxing. it's like a kickboxing, just, kickboxing just match. Kickboxing. Like, what I recommend... Well, you what can I do MMA smokers, too, but it's usually like a tournament in one night in some yeah, really I, shady spot. It would be like an you An MMA tournament? Yeah, it would be like a tournament at the Nutty Brown Cafe or something like that. Oh, fancy. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. <laughs> Get some dinner before Get some chicken fries steak, <laughs> yeah. some gravy. What do, you, what do you think, what type of fighter do you think you would be? Do you think you'd be a stand-up fighter? Do you think you'd be a ground fighter? I would be, I want to kill you fighter. <laughs> 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 I don't know. I have no, I, I don't think I know enough about my abilities at this point to say. Mm -hmm. I would do anything possible to win. If I, I got to take you to the ground, I'll take you to the ground. If I got to punch you in the face or kick you, I'll punch you in the face and I'll kick you. I think that's one of the advantages of starting, you know, without any kind of, you know, you're starting learning MMA, you know, so you're going to learn the sport and figure out, you know, learn it like kind of some, uh, some of the new, new age fighters coming up like a Rory McDonald or somebody like that who just started learning MMA from the start. So all your techniques are going to be geared for effectiveness. So we'll see. Yeah. The most effective way to get my hand raised. <laughs> Do you know what song you want to come out to? That's like, my, if I was in a fight ever. How many times have you planned thing. that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I stand yeah. in the mirror what's, what's and, like, <laughs> and I look and like, look at my what's body. Your, what's and your like, song? As Whitney, oh, as Whitney to the thinks jungle, about or anything. <laughs> what's your song? Welcome <laughs> to the jungle? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to ask you this the other day, what your song would be. Then I got caught up in Rihanna that was playing yeah, on Yeah, I've, I've, come, I've come out to Nicki Minaj. I've come out to some... Um, some other stuff, but I, I like to come out to stuff that's Little kind Kim. of... Uh, <laughs> I don't even <laughs> know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but didn't she have two palm marks on her boobies? I think so. Or is that Eve? Yeah, that's know. Eve. I'm oh. not sure. I like I to come really out to stuff that's kind of like upbeat and happy because if it's I come out to something that's too aggressive, then it takes just it just takes me out of my zone. Right. And I need to be like... Ding, da, da, ding, ding, ding. Like, I just need to be happy and just like. <laughs> <laughs> I did say the other day that I wanted to come out to just like an instrumental, like a very slow piano song. Like a violin. Or a violin. Yeah. Just, just kind of really so scary. <laughs> just a solo <laughs> violin. Just come out, yeah, and come out crying. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I remember I was joking with you when we, you first started talking about this. I thought it would be really excellent if you came out to the Miss United States theme. <laughs> <laughs> she's beauty and she's grace. She's Miss United States. Do it. Yeah, that's pretty good. And just just wave your way. And that's just going to make them want to hit you so much more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get under their if skin. If you could do that and still stay in the zone, that would be awesome. <laughs> Maybe I would just put headphones in. Just think, of, think of all the songs that could really kind of fuck with people's heads. That would be hilarious if I walked out to that song. Hilarious. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But then you'd have to win. You can't lose after that. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> the, what could we? What could we do for you <laughs> here, Michelle? What could be your crazy song? Maybe like one night in Bangkok. <laughs> 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 and they'd be like, "Whoa, that's a weird choice." They'd be thinking about it, and then you just choke them before they even figured out <laughs> even what that meant. Yeah. What does that even mean? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, there have been times when I, like, I, like I'm the second one out, and I hear their song, you know. And um, there was one where it's like, "We about to throw them bows." Yeah, oh, yeah. Like, oh no, that's a good one. It's about to be a girl fight, <laughs> and then I lost, and I hate that song now. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what about? I think about this. Like, when is it better to walk out first or better to walk out second? Second. It's up to you, but it, I mean. I keep saying the zone, but I mean, if you're in the zone, it don't matter. Yeah. Hmm. Makes sense. I suppose, you know, typically the champion walks out second. So you assume that that's the more favorable position. Less time in the ring, less time to think about things. Mm -hmm. You don't have to sit there and wait as the other person's song, you know, because back in the tunnel or back in the locker room, wherever you're at, you're kind of in your own little world. You can have headphones if you want. It's easy to kind of stay in your bubble. 
But when you're in the ring, you got all the eyes on you. Yeah. You got the other person. You hear all the cheers. But I think the key thing is, you know, talking to all the fighters and just being an athlete in different sports myself is just got to stay riding, riding the present moment, you know, take it all in. Don't try to not hear it. Don't try to do anything. Just take it all in. You're there. And as long as you're there in that moment, you'll perform at your best. Mm hmm. It's thoughts that it's thoughts that get in the way of the training. You know, you have your strategy, you know what that is, but the extraneous thoughts of what's happening here, blah blah blah, all of that just slows you down. And speed kills. Yep, yep. Bill for speed. Indeed. Well, Michelle, what's uh you don't exactly know what's next, but I know you're eager and I'm watching you train this week. Uh like I said, I'm I'm scared. I'm scared <laughs> for them girls. <laughs> I hope so. I know that after that fight, there's a lot of people gunning for me, um, and it kind of gets it kind of gets me excited, you know. And um, I, I kind of want to take whatever challenge they have uh, for me and kind of just stick it to them. I hear you. Well, anything else you guys want to add, Whitney? Where can we keep up with you, Michelle? Where can we keep up with you? Um, well, you can check out the videos at YouTube.com/slash. Miss Two Jits, M I S S number two J I T S, and then that's everything. So Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Miss Two Jits, and we're doing like a web series on YouTube, so you can follow along and see how training's going, or just kind of everything I got going on. See my breakdowns, see my good times, and get there on it. The dot tournaments com, on it. dot com slash Whitney as well. Yes, Has that full landing page, all the videos, some cool pics. Yeah, it looks really dope. Yeah. I'm pretty excited about it. One of the cool things that we've been able to do is you've gotten exposed to a lot of different, not only top MMA athletes through, you know, obviously our connections here with Onnit, but other athletes as well. You were just with the top sprinter and different things. How's mm-hmm. that been working with all these different people? Well, How's I always think it's great to, again, challenge yourself in all different aspects. I think you can take, um, you know, their training method methods and use it to benefit you and so we went up to defranco's gym in new jersey and i fell in love with that place up there i mean he's just so knowledgeable but he trains a bunch of you know nfl players and i just feel like a lot of their a lot of their workouts um would benefit me in jujitsu mm-hmm. and fighting and we were watching the sprinter the other day and he went through some of his um, workouts and explosive movements and we could definitely incorporate those kind of just seems like everything fits together mm-hmm. sure yeah I think there's a lot to be gained and I think not pigeonholing yourself in one methodology and just embracing it all you know that's the that's the beauty of what MMA did they said hey everybody let's bring all your best techniques put them all in a pot and see what comes out melts down and see what comes out through there and that's yep. it's been the beautiful thing of that and that's kind of what our philosophy here has been for training it on it is take everything available out there and let's put it to the test see what comes out best so i think yeah. you'll get an opportunity to do that as well yeah i'm looking forward to um training with all of these other athletes as well mm-hmm. picking up little things here and there whoa where'd that come from you know yeah <laughs> steven seagal bitches <laughs> Not really. No. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about I think that that's one. that's where the sport is going, though. Like, with MMA, it's like it's evolving. And um, if you're not evolving with it, you're left behind, yep. you know? So you have to evolve with the sport and learn as much as you can. Indeed. So where can people find you to keep up with your latest happenings? Um, well, I'm, I'm not too good at social media, but I try. Uh, you know, I let people know about my family and the things that we do and it's just uh, Karate Hottie MMA, and that's my Twitter and my Instagram and my Facebook. She has the cutest little girl on the history of the world. <laughs> In the history of the world. <laughs> yes. I concur. <laughs> Very cute little kid. Good techniques. We were, yeah, I know. She's yeah. fighting. Did you post that video? She, yeah, she's my little ninja. Yeah. She's really into ninjas right now. She loves Karate Kid. Who isn't into ninjas? Everybody's into ninjas. That would be weird. How can you why not be ninja, into ninjas? Why are ninjas so appealing to kids? Because the t- they're awesome. What do you mean? Why are they so appealing? Ninja turtles are so appealing. I think <laughs> it's because ninjas Ooh. can kill with like sneaky, not overpowering. Like a kid's not going to be powerful, you know? No, but maybe. But a kid can be sneaky as fuck. That's you know? what I'm saying. They can like throw a ninja star here. They can stick you yeah. when you're not looking. Ninjas don't get caught. And kids, when they're doing something... They don't want to get caught. They want to be a ninja. Oh, I know, what she, I know when she's doing something because it gets quiet. 
<laughs> I'm like, you try to be a ninja. Well, her mom's a ninja. That's a <laughs> that's the problem. Her mom's a real ninja. <laughs> I haven't seen her for a week and my husband made me cry yesterday because he put her on the phone and he's like teaching her all this stuff and she's all, mom, she's all, I'm strong and beautiful and smart like you. Aww. And I <laughs> Aww, that was sweet. Yeah, but it just, I mean, it makes, it puts That's it what I tell Orlando every day. Makes me work harder. Yeah, that's, a, that's exactly what it does for me. Yeah. That's so cute. I, I mean, when I get to the point to have kids, I can't wait for them to be like in jujitsu. <laughs> Rolling around. Yeah. Whoa. Or like my nephews. Man, they need to be in jujitsu. One, it'll teach them discipline because they need it. Oh, it's a different type. It, it's a discipline of your emotions. Well, it, they need that too. Yeah. That's the most important part. And of it would just be awesome. I, mean, I want to be, I want to be like, hey, do an arm bar on me. <laughs> Or like when I come up to you, I like to go up to Aubrey and be like, oh, hey, babe, so good to see you. And just slide my. Yeah, no, I got to watch my neck. Right underneath all, his chin. All points in time. I'm like, I'm like Ronda Rousey living with her crazy mom now. <laughs> hey. Trying to just choke me at all points in the day. I got to practice, you know, keep you on your toes, keeping <laughs> things you. fresh. It's Valentine's Day. It's what Woo-wee. we do. Speaking of which, happy Valentine's Day, everybody out there. Have a good day, whether you're single, whether you're with somebody. Share the love. The one person you can always love is yourself. Don't yeah. forget that. Mm-hmm. So no matter what, give yourself some good love today. And much love from us at On It to you guys and um, you guys as well. Thanks for doing this podcast. Oh, shit. I just got a warrior bar in my hand. Yummo. This is just like the Tonka bar, except double the size for warriors like you do. Yeah. 14 grams of protein coming out early March. Keep an eye out. It's going to be They're great. They're so good. I just ate one. The I whole thing? Things. No, I had a regular Tonka bar because I apparently I'm not cool enough for a warrior bar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, just, you know, talk to the people that are on it. And, well, maybe, know, maybe, yeah, I just need it. A, I'm a, I should maybe date the CEO or something. <laughs> maybe I can get some shit done then. Maybe. Possible. <laughs> <laughs> Possible. Round two. Good help. Good help. <laughs> yeah. Happy Valentine's Day. All right, everybody. Much love. We'll catch you next time. Later. Later.